I'm pleased to be joined by our Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services, Michael Tobolo, and our Attorney General, Caroline Mulroney. I know they both care deeply about the families who have lost loved ones to gangs and gun violence. In particular, here in Toronto and the GTA. It's something I care deeply about. It's something we all care about. It's time to get serious about fighting guns and gangs. It's time to get serious about fighting gun violence. No more talk, no more grandstanding. It's time for action. It's time to put public safety first. Too many families have lost loved ones to gang and gun violence. Too many people, too many neighborhoods are living in fear. And too many of our police officers are frustrated. Frustrated that their hands are tied. They lack the best resources to do their job. And even when they do catch the bad guys, too often our officers must work through an ineffective and paralyzed court system. A system that lets far too many criminals convicted of gun crimes out on bail and back on the streets the very next day. People throughout Toronto and GTA have had enough and people are just sick of it. They're sick of shootings, they're sick of violence, they're sick of the killings and they are sick of all of the city councillors, activists, and special interests who use each shooting as an excuse to campaign for more spending, more layers of bureaucracy, and more handouts, and more pet projects, throwing more money at programs that have nothing to do with community safety. We have to be better, we're going to be better, and make no mistake, this is even bigger than Toronto and the GTA. Organized crime that starts in Toronto ends up spilling into Ottawa and other centres. So fighting guns and gangs is and will remain a top priority for our government. During the last election campaign, we made a clear commitment to the voters. The Liberals decided that fighting guns and gangs wasn't a priority. They actually cut the funding. They cut the funding to police who were fighting guns and gangs. They cut it in half. It's unbelievable and sadly, we are seeing the results of their funding cuts on our streets today. How many shootings could have been stopped if the Liberals didn't cut this funding? We made a clear promise to the people that we would restore the funding that the Liberals cut from our police. Roughly $12 million over four years. Today, I'm happy to say, promises made, promises kept. In fact, after looking even deeper into this, since taking office, I can tell you we're going to even go further. I'm proud to say, promises made, promises doubled. We're going to invest more than $25 million above and beyond existing funding of $76 million to support the fight against guns and gangs. This is real money, critical funding targeting the areas of greatest need. Priority areas that were identified in consultation with Chief Mark Saunders and other members of the Toronto Police Services. Because we believe the Chief knows best, he knows where the resources are most needed. Chief Saunders and his team are out every single day on the front lines keeping Toronto safe. And that's who we believe in listening to. Not the politicians at City Hall, not the so-called experts. So we're going to start by creating and funding a dedicated legal SWAT team for each provincial courthouse. Each team will be led by an experienced Crown Attorney, and each team will have only one mission, keeping violent gun criminals behind bars and away from bail. 
These teams will work closely with regular Crown attorneys and our guns and gangs teams to provide additional legal expertise and support. Resources that will help police keep gangsters and gun criminals locked up. And each of these legal SWAT teams will be supported by a new dedicated bail compliance officers. Officers that will go into the field and keep an eye on gun criminals who are out on bail. These resources are welcomed by the Toronto Police and will make a significant difference in the fight to keep violent gangsters and gun criminals off our streets. All told, this will cost $7.5 million over the next four years. We are also going to provide Toronto Police with millions of dollars to fund dedicated technology and other specialized tools. These are the cutting edge digital, investigative and analytical tools that police need to fight drug gangs and gun criminals in 2018. And I'm proud to say our government is stepping up to the plate. That's where the remaining $18 million will go. We are here today with our check in our hand and we are calling on the municipal and federal governments to match this unprecedented funding. We are calling on them to step up and do their part. The feds must do more and the city must step forward, starting with a following through on their commitment to hire more police officers. It's critical we hire more police officers and filling their entire intake of new police officers at the Ontario Police College because we all have a part to play and with today's announcement, Ontario's doing its part. We are sending a clear message to the thugs, to the violent criminals who think they own our streets. We are sending a message that we are coming for them, that we are giving our police the tools they need to hunt them down. And we are going to make sure that when these criminals are caught, they aren't getting off on bail and back on the streets the next day. Thank you. Any questions at the mic? Good morning, Premier. Hi, Cynthia. How do you always get first in line? I smile nicely at Simon, basically. Okay. You said on the campaign, um, excuse me, you said on the campaign trail, Premier, that you supported Tavis. Will any of this money go towards Tavis and would you support it if it did? No, we aren't going to have Tavis. Uh, we're going to focus on guns and gangs. We uh, have all the faith in the world and and the chief and uh, and frankly uh, the the police association too needs their input so we have faith in uh, consulting with, with the chief and letting them decide um, Cynthia we, we aren't experts the politicians aren't experts they, all politicians think they're experts but they aren't the experts are the police so we're gonna hand over the money they're gonna be accountable and they're gonna be able to tell us this is where we think the money should go but if they said, Next we question. think it should go to Tavis, would you support that? No, if they no, wanted to no, resurrect there's no it? There's no Tavis, there's no carding. That's going to be up to uh, the police uh, to focus on, uh, I, I think the things are changing now in policing, uh, looking at digital technology. But I can't stress it enough. Uh, I'm from the old school. I love boots on the ground. I love having police in neighborhoods. But again, that's not up to the Premier uh, to decide. <coughs> It's up to uh, the police chief to decide. All right, next question. Hi, Premier. I'm Hi. wondering if, if you would support Toronto's request for a ban on handguns in the city, and if you support the federal government's look at further restrictions on guns. No, you know, I, I wouldn't uh, support a ban on handguns. Uh, there's a lot of uh, legal, responsible uh, handgun owners. And uh, I'll give you an example. You, you look at Chicago, you, you all know that I spent a ton of time in Chicago, and they have a band, and guess what? Last week, they had 72 shootings. 72 or 76 shootings, just imagine that. So we have to refocus uh, all our resources, are going after the bad guys. Not the good guys, but the bad guys. And uh, as I said, we're coming for them. So uh, to all the bad guys out there, heads up, we're coming to get you. <laughs> Next question. Morning, Premier. Just wondering if this $25 million, is it one-time funding? Are you going to be putting more in at a later date? Well, that, that's going to be over uh, a four-year period. 
that we're going to be doing the, the $25 million on top. I want to emphasize on top of the $76 million. So we're putting over $100 million uh, into the funding. And it's absolutely critical that the feds uh, step up to the plate. And uh, the, the city, uh, Mayor Tory, I talked to him uh, over, the, over the weekend at uh, the Caribbean Carnival. Uh, he was very appreciative. I look forward to working closely with, with the mayor. And uh, the feds, they, they have to come to the plate as well. Premier, today's money is all about law enforcement. Is there any money or any effort that you think should be focused on getting to the root of gun crime? And do you think we can arrest our way out of this problem? Well, you know something, I, I'm a strong believer in root cause. You know, why, 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 the five whys. Go all the way down to root cause and, and find out, number one, why it's happening, where the guns are coming from. That's a, that's a huge question that uh, we're trying to, trying to source out. Uh, you know, I, I feel a lot of guns are obviously coming across the, the border. But again, uh, folks, I'm, I'm not the expert. Uh, the police are the experts. So I'm going to let the, the police decide that. And uh, I believe in empowering the police to make decisions with the funding that they get. I don't believe politicians should be telling the police what they should and shouldn't be doing. All right, this is our last question. Hi, Premier. My name is Gabrielle Jurde, and I am the editor of Law Times, and we go to lawyers and judges across Ontario. Yes. And I'm here today because I wanted to ask about um, a series we're doing on uh, the creation of a law school at Ryerson, which is on deck for 2020. And I just wanted to ask you, um, because some lawyers are voicing opposition to this due to a lack of articling positions and due to job shortages for young lawyers, I wanted to ask your thoughts on the proposed law school for Ryerson and whether or not you think that's a good thing or bad thing and whether or not your government is looking again at funding this yeah. new school. Well, you know something, since I'm not a lawyer, I'm going to hand this one over to the Attorney General. <laughs> knows more about law than I do. Uh, yes, and actually I would refer you to the Minister of Training Colleges and Universities, who I know is, is looking into this, and um, I think she'd be happy to talk to you about it. All right, thank you very much, everybody.